Hi, I'm Wanda from Go Laser Go. Now today we're going to take a look at the Sculpfun IQ Pro Max 10 Watt Laser. And this is one of the many portable machines that seem to be hitting the market lately. And we'd like to thank Sculpfun for giving us the opportunity to review the IQ. Now these type of machines are generally less complicated than most laser machines and they can be easily moved around and stored, making them ideal for someone who wants a machine that's easy to use and takes up little space. They're also more stylish looking than regular frame style diode machines and yes okay that may be a bit of an exaggeration but if you compare the iCube with the Sculpt Fun S30 that we reviewed a couple of years ago it's easy to tell which one is more appealing to look at. However these smaller machines do have their limitations so we'd never want to give up our frame style lasers but it's easy to see why the iCube will appeal to say the beginner or the home hobbyist or even a seasoned professional who just wants something that can be transported to craft shows. So let's get on and see what we got and what it can do. Now in the box we found the machine of course and it comes with an orange U-shaped safety cover. Now this shield has a protective coating on the front and the back so you'll need to remove that before you use the machine. Also in the box there are a number of other accessories including the laser module and all the necessary cables, a replacement filter set, some safety glasses, always essential, a manual, a piece of MDF board and a piece of basswood and a repair kit which includes a chrome wrench, some tweezers, a spare lens, two Allen keys, a second wrench and a cleaning cloth. There is also a removable metal plate that sits in the bottom of the machine and as it isn't attached with screws it's easy to remove. On the front of the machine you have the safety cover which can easily be removed as it simply slides out. On the side we have an audio outlet and this is for buzzer alert sounds, an on and off switch, a power slot and a type C port. And on the back of the machine we have the exhaust fan outlet. It looks like there is an air purifier that works with this machine based on the images on their sales page but I've been unable to find it for sale on the website as yet. This may be an accessory that will be available in the future. Now on the inside of the machine you can see that it comes with a plate which I've already mentioned. This protects the surface and provides a base to place your material. You can also use it without the plate and as you can see we have a tile that we purchased from our local hardware store that we use to protect our work surface. I would have liked to have seen some sort of ridge insert to hold the plate in place as it does move around. The iCube has a working area of 130mm by 130mm. Now this does limit the area that you can engrave or cut. However you can overhang materials on the base which is great so you can work with larger objects or you can just lift up the machine and move it onto the area that you want to engrave. Now the machine that we have is a 10 watt but it does come in a 5 watt and 3 watt version although I don't see the option to purchase the 3 watt on their website at the moment of making this video. Personally I would stick to at least a 5 watt anyway and if funds allow definitely go with the 10 watt especially if you want a faster machine and your focus is on having the power to enable a nice clean cut. You can check out the comparison between the three machines on their sales page to see what's right for you and we'll put links in the description field below. Now another thing we need to mention is that the iCube has an inbuilt smoke filtering system so we were able to use this in the craft room. However we still had some burning smell so it's not going to eradicate everything plus to be fair we did have the shield off for a lot of the time for filming. They do include a replacement filter kit in the box which is nice. And on their sales page they do show an air purifier which is not currently available and may be a later accessory that you can purchase. A setup is very easy for this machine. You only have to attach the laser module and that's pretty simple. It's just a matter of sliding the module onto the machine and tightening the screw that is attached to the laser mount. There's also a cable that needs to be plugged in to the back of the laser head. Now once the module is attached the only thing left to do is to connect the USB cable from the machine to your computer and of course plug in the power cable. Now Sculpt Fun do have their own app so you can use your mobile phone or tablet to use this machine. The software is easy to connect and you can get a lot done with it but our preference is to use Lightburn and that was simple to set up. Lightburn found the machine automatically so there was no need to do a manual setup. Now that we are connected we are ready to start testing and the first thing we look for when we start out with any new laser machine is the material settings list but unfortunately Sculpt Fund do not have one specifically for this machine. 
On their website we found the super long page of information which is actually quite good but no specific settings for the iCube. And yes I agree that there are no universal settings but as someone who has been using a numerous different lasers for a while now I still have to see a materials list. It gives me a ballpark setting to go with and something to base my testing around. When asked they advised us to use the material settings list for other similar machines Personally, I would like to see a separate list for each machine, and especially so for the iQ, which is a sort of machine that suits a beginner or a home hobbyist who is just starting out with laser engraving. If they have to guess, they could potentially risk a fire causing damage to the material they're working on or with the machine itself. So let's start with an MDF coaster. Now MDF looks amazing when engraved and it's pretty hard to mess it up so it's always the one we begin with. Now you can see we are working without the plate so in order to focus we just need to move the laser module into the centre. Then we just pull down the focusing lever and turn the screw on the side so that we can lift the module up and down. The goal is to get the lever to be level with your material. Now once it's level you can tighten the screw and then lift the lever back up. In Lightburn we just need to adjust our settings to suit the material we are working with. Now for MDF we went with 3000 speed and 15% power. And then we homed the laser module by clicking on the home button. And we click on frames so that we can position our coaster in the right position. To do this you can move your image around in Lightburn or you can move the coaster like we did here. Now once we're happy with the placement we can click the start button. It is a good idea to use the safety shield so you can put this on before you click the start button. Otherwise you definitely want to use your safety glasses and SculptFun includes a pair in the box with the machine. Now the file we used for this coaster came from Creative Fabrica and there will be a link to that in the description field below. You can see this is coming out great and the final result was perfect so we were very pleased with our first test. And we wanted to try a few wood products, so we started with a coaster. We went with a speed of 3000 and 30% for the power. Now if you want to see the settings for all of the materials we tested in this video, there will be a link in the description field below to our website. Now, as you can see, this is coming out great, but in hindsight, I wish we had made the image a little larger to cover more of the coaster. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the result. Continuing on with the wood theme, we tested some small tags. The file we downloaded from Creative Fabrica and the iCube did a great job with these. I mean if you're going to do these en masse you would set yourself up with a jig of some sort which would make this process a whole lot easier. The next thing we wanted to test was the cutting ability of this machine so we chose a wooden bookmark file. The engraving went beautifully but as it started cutting I thought it looked a bit too intense and that we would end up with charring but it actually ended up coming out perfectly. Now this was a 2mm piece of ply, but SculptFun claims that it can cut up to 10mm, so we thought we would test it out on a 5mm piece of polonia wood. Now this was our first attempt at cutting at 180 speed and 100% power with one pass. Now it cut through beautifully, but we thought we might try again, with the speed increased to 250 to try and reduce some of the charring. Next we tried a slate coaster and engraved a dragonfly onto it. This came out okay but not as good as I would have liked. It looked a bit rough. We used 500 speed and 100% power and that was way too intense. We did a bit of testing with multiple settings and ended up with a speed of 3000 and 100% power. Now this was a big difference to our original settings and I think it came out a lot better. Plus it took about a third of the time. We also like to test on anodized aluminium and this time we engraved a dog on one side and an eagle on the other and you can see how nicely these turned out. Now if you make cards, create journals or do a bit of scrapbooking then you will love this machine. It's small and compact so you can easily cut lots of little embellishments to suit your project. As you can see here the machine cuts cardstock beautifully and super fast. The heart took only two minutes to cut. You can see we also cut some tags and they cut perfectly but in hindsight of course we should have made them a lot larger but they'll slip nicely into some tuck spots. So let's take a look at some of the pros and some of the cons of the iCube. So for the pros the machine is small and compact so you can easily move it around and store it. It has an inbuilt filtering system which means you can use it indoors in your craft room. It's super easy to set up and connects easily to Lightburn and even though it has a small engraving area you can engrave on larger objects. The cons. Now the machine is quite noisy. I think this is because of the inbuilt air filter. I would have liked the option to turn this on or off.
The base plate moves around so it would have been nice to have a groove that it slipped into to hold it in place or a couple of screws. At the start we found the safety shield a little fiddly to slip into place although we did get the hang of it after a while. But overall we really like this machine and enjoyed using it. It's great for small projects and it's definitely one we'll be bringing out regularly to use. So once again Thank you to Sculpt Fun for sending us this great little machine to review and if you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching.